This is Come to Daddy with Ruben Kay, the podcast for people who love their parents at a distance. In other news, if anyone knows the exact distance a canon can reach, please let me know. I'm not saying I've got daddy issues, but I only found out yesterday in yoga that child's pose isn't a thumb in your mouth and asking for help to use the big boy toilet. I'm here at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival with all the most wonderful people in the world who I love dearly, which is why my producer Amanda is not here. <laughs> She's in London and it's awful. Amanda, how are you doing in London? We do miss you. How are the pugs? How's your wonderful pixie mullet? I mean, technically, my hairdresser said it's called a mullet hawk, but I have issues with cultural appropriation because I'm neither working class American or Native American. So let's go with pixie hawk. I mean, I'm not a pixie either, but I think perhaps that's less politically challenging. But can I just say this is also coming from a man who, when his hair gets long, uh, looks like Princess Diana. So ask him, if you bump into him in the street, say to him, do your there are three people in this marriage impression. And now they've started drilling next door, which is a good cue for me to stop waffling. Sorry about this, I'll stop. So love us, like us, uh, mainly love and like Ruben, otherwise he gets really jealous. That's lovely, Amanda, but back to us. Let's get into it. My guest today is a comedy powerhouse. A woman who I have said could turn me heterosexual for three and a half minutes before I slingshot back to cock. (laughs) Ouch. It's the delicious (laughs) Helen Bauer. Come to daddy. I love coming in daddy. (laughs) (laughs) No, that was not like, yeah. Did I actually? Well, no. You cannot interview someone in the last week of a comedy festival and expect any of this to make sense. None of it will be usable. This is actually evil. We're anything. not even plugged in. We're not? Wait, no. am I just here so you can fill my diary? Yeah. That's so sad. Why does this keep happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I'm having a lovely time so far. It's a joy and a pleasure and a privilege. Hey, so Come to Daddy is a podcast where I ask comedians about their parents and how that influences their comedy yeah, you do. and their life. Yeah, you do. We start off real simple. Oh, God. Explain to the listeners what your childhood bedroom would be like. Would be like, no, or was is, like, is, as is like, correct. Come on. Explain to, go, okay, it's new. I'm new at this. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually a new thing. This podcast is a new thing. No comedian's ever done it before. Um, okay, you're going to be enchanted by this. I was like obsessed with having like the latest room all the time, but never got it. So I would accessorize it myself. Great. The main era, yellow and orange, bright yellow, oh, bright orange. They don't go together. Disney cutouts from a calendar. Terrifying. All over the wall covered in blue tack. Yeah, it's feeling like this should be, the only thing that's missing is red thread. <laughs> Like tying it. I will have Jasmine's eyes and I will have Ariel's hair and I will have... <laughs> it was it was manic. And then like there was a cool shop in a town quite close to where I grew up and they sold those like spirals and, and wind chimes mm. and things with little mirrors on them. And it was like run by like an older white woman who was like super holistic for the area. <laughs> and... Oh my God. I just, I lent in way too hard. It was just overstuffed with things and I had a sink in my room just the sink I can I say this my mind was opened when I finally found sinks in bedrooms in the UK <laughs> I must have a sink in my bedroom just the sink nothing else yeah just a tap you can give yourself a little spritz on the face you can get a little glass of cold water mm-hmm. and worse comes to worse you can pee I weed in it all the time fun all the time because I was a tall kid yeah so I could like get one leg over and like enough minge to get it in like my parents must have known that, that floorboards the... underneath it were like Dripping. disintegrating <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like I... alien blood just like eating away at it <laughs> I also think that the next title of your show Helen Bauer just enough minge just enough min- just enough minge over it <laughs> Because like for like for okay, if you've got a vagina to piss in a sink, mm. like you you it's you do have to think for an extra second. I think in many ways there should be a female urinal, but you have to design it so that it comes out around and forward, mm-hmm. like the bow of a ship. But like <gasps> even like so, you, the, it it sort of cradles under the sea. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sea, the sea, where a c string would go, like a g string. But, but a C-string. I've used a urine like successfully before. Yeah, but you, and I'm going to say this with so much love. Uh huh. You're, you're unique. Thank you so much. You want to say that? I did not feel like it was with love. But the tr- <laughs> just in case anyone's listening who does want to use uh, your know, what you do is you press yourself flat against the wall and don't push. Let it come out as a stream. Great. 
Because then it just goes straight down. Ah, uh, and if you push it... Um... I think if you push and you sort of like, you might, it might go out right. and then like splash back. Like, right. you know, when you vomit, but you've got your hand up because you think it's a cough. Familiar. Like, and then it flicks back in your face when you're drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, so not, like, you want to just, like, let it trickle down. Kleenex, two dabs on the clear, off you pop. Like, Perfect. it works for me. It works for me. Everybody's different. Yeah. Everyone's different. Everyone's everybody's different. Everyone's body is a wonderland. <laughs> and everyone's voice is valid. Thank you. Now I'm thinking, I didn't have any toilet roll in my bedroom growing up. What was I wiping <laughs> myself with? So what, was the, what were you dabbing? What were your two dabs? Yeah, what was I with? wiping? What were What's you wiping, wiping with? What were you wiping with? We know what you were wiping. What were you wiping with? Oh, it would have been like yesterday's knickers maybe or something. Hot. It must or, have been. Or one really sad, sad, terrified Barbie sitting by the sink. This is when we find out my mum's like, you just don't, don't, don't not with the Barbie. I'm not being that minging. I refuse to I'm be that I'm the minging. wiping Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to rebrand myself. I don't want to be like, you know, you know, Helen, Helen Bauer, the comedian, the minger. Like, I don't want that for me anymore. I don't know what I, I want to rebrand as like a like you know Helen super kind super gentle super fun. Hey, what are the names of your parents? Anne and Michael. Anne and Michael. Yeah. Is that your middle name named after mum? Yeah. Named after mum. Named after mum. Named would after they, mother. Would they have named you Michael if you had been a boy? No, it was going to be Lyle. Oh my Lyle. god. Now I can't think of you. Oh, don't. I know Lyle Bauer. Like what the fuck? No, or, or Lawrence. And I'm really hoping we'll have gone Florence. Then I could have been a lorry. Yeah. And Laurie's cute. Laurie, Laurie Bauer. Laurie, come on. Laurie Bauer's cute. Lyle Bauer has an unmarked van with candy in it. <laughs> Lyle Bauer. Lyle I Bauer. think it's because there's a Lyle like on my mum's side a bit back. That's not a but, reason um, to call someone Lyle. If I was, they, like, I think I settled on Helen because my dad could spell it. But my mum originally wanted like Madeline or like Juliet or something. But my dad's just not like... He's not academic. No. <laughs> Couldn't get his head around it. So they were like, how what, long will do? What were, their, what were their jobs? My dad works in sewage. Great. It's a shit, shit farm. Mm. And my mum is a jack of all trades. <laughs> she's, 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 she's gone through a lot of obscure jobs. Right. Currently, mm. she is. Thinking oh, she she's in curry. her best era, actually. She is a speech and language festival adjudicator. Do you have that thing here? Like, it's like, so like competitions that children can do as extracurricular activities, like, mainly children. Like enunciation and poem recitals. So poetry recitals, choral verse speaking. They can, but you can do duologues, you can act out. There can be improv rounds. What's a choral duo? Choral speaking is sort of like, it's like a choir for a poem. And it's like read out in like, and you, you're looking, it sounds really weird, but I grew up doing gay. choral speaking. Gay. I grew up doing choral speaking. My mom is a big gay ally. As some of you do. <laughs> the best you sex like... she ever had was a gay man. She <laughs> told me that. <laughs> we have to get into that. But hang on. So there's a choral soundscape. They're doing like, is it just them speaking the words? Or are they all doing like the sounds and the birds and the things? And you can do the, the sounds scene. and the birds as well. You can also like, you like, some people can like whisper things. Or like be like you know the background, and then you sort of like bring a poem to life, or you can do it with a passage of prose as that well. That sounds lovely, and it's like a it's that a does thing. sound it's a really nice. Thing. It's a thing. As long as they don't use any religious texts, I think it sounds lovely. The no. minute they do religious texts, it becomes weird. No, it does get weird. So she adjudicates those in like different places around the world now. Actually, oh amazing! She just did it in um like Hong Kong. Wow. Insanely cool. That is very cool. Like she's just like arrived in her 70s and she's like, I'm going to Hong Kong to judge children reading poetry. Bye bitches. Peace Fuck out. Yourselves. <laughs> Will Anne and Michael listen to this? Do they oh, consume your work? My mother does. Um, they're divorced now. Mm -hmm. um, with my, partners or? With, my dad's got a girlfriend. My mother is. Oh God, just men, Helen, men. Mm. Um, she she knows what she wants and she will not settle for second best. No. And we kind of love to see it. Love that. We kind of love to see it, Anne. So she is, she's living her best life. Um, will they listen? My mum might. Hi, mummy, if you're listening. She listens to things. She she knows what podcasts are. Like <laughs> my dad. Mm, not a clue. Like, How not old a is clue. Michael? Michael's 73. How old's the girlfriend? 
I think she's 68, mm. but I think she said she was like 58. To the okay. point where I'm like, come on, Michael, this at, is better that she's 68. At which point does lying about your age just like not matter anymore? Like you're 68 and you go, no, no, I am a spry little girl of 58. <laughs> like right? it's still two years off 60. It's all a bit of a blamange. Like who cares? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Honestly, it is... It, incredible he's a, he's a really nice man like he's not like he's mm. nice he's generous but i'm like what like these women are like international ex-lawyers you know what i mean oh and this man has had three jobs in his entire life and he's a sewage worker sewage since he was 24 before that he was a lawnmower at a zoo he must have a magic dick and then a duck there's got to be something i mean i came out of it i'm pretty My, special. yeah right <laughs> right just, just God super soaker. <laughs> do we have that? Do you have them in the UK? Super, super soakers? Hundred percent. You do. I had a super soaker three thousand. Uh, yeah. Well, my brother had two, and one of them was technically mine. What do you think their parenting style was like with you? <laughs> <laughs> Not. <clears throat> you seem happy. <sighs> Not like I got away. I got to do whatever I wanted. Look at that face. It's the face of a psychopath. <laughs> well, because they were very like they were working. Yeah, and where do you sit in the chronology of your chronology of your your kids, say, the, sim siblings? Mm, oh. I'm in the middle, and it's literally like two. My brother, so I've got a big brother called Ted. Two Ted? years later, Ted. 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 You got a big Ted. I got a big Ted. Two years later, me. Two years later, my little sister. But who does not get a name? I noticed. Oh, Marianne. <laughs> Sweet Marianne, which is a great name, by the way, and something yeah, I will is. always be slightly annoyed about. Like mm. Marianne, Marianne, Helen, <sighs> come on, Anne. Um, I know Michael had nothing to do with the naming. So they basically, my brother had some like health stuff when he was younger. My sister is like super, she's got lots of learning difficulties and was like a selective mute when I was younger. So like, uh, they, they, this, they. Was she a selective mute, or did you just not shut up? Why does everyone say that? Because that's not like it's not. Someone doesn't become like a selective mute because their siblings are bawdy and chatty. Bawdy, bawdy. I was a yeah. bawdy child, but like they just uh, through the nature of my siblings having, I think particularly my younger sister needing a lot of parenting particularly during like the 90s i know things are like a lot better now people with like learning difficulties not perfect but like there was nothing set up in our area for yeah. it right so my mum had to go to battle to like get everything sorted like trained as a like, special educational needs teacher in a school like really like had to go for it my dad was away at different sewage plants <laughs> helping people sort out poo on the plant i'm not joking <laughs> Like he, so like, but then because I, um, for like want of a better term, didn't have those additional needs, mm. I just went to the local schools where yeah. my siblings went to different schools. My sister went to a special needs school. My brother went to another school for like separate reasons. So I would walk myself to school and yeah. I would come home and people would come back later and my school would finish early. You so were I was, a lot of independence. I just was just, I just tooted along. I had amazing friends that lived on my road. I was very much like, and my mum is, and oh it's so weird because I've got a bit about it in my show. She's, I was raised by liberal hippies. My mum yeah. was always like, you're not going to be defined by a letter on a piece of paper. You can study hard for these exams, but I know you'll fall on your feet. You do you, do you babe. You do you. So, I like, love that. Thank I, you, Anne. I, like, honestly, my friends can remember it sometimes, like her coming in when they'd be over being like, oh God, you're not all studying trying to get into university, are you? <laughs> Just like, she studied dance at Lancaster. Like, she's like, <laughs> that era she um so yeah i just did whatever i fucking wanted and like yeah i would try really hard but just not i, I wasn't in top sets for things like i managed to scrape past so i could get into college but deep down i always wanted to be an actor mm. like really wanted to be but my mum decided to oh god this is gonna make my family sound so mental my mum decided for extra money she was gonna start running a drama school from our living room when i was four years old that sounds perfect for this podcast and really quite, quite the norm the Ann Bauer school of drama stop um, that's very I'm not, good it's incredible the do you know Ann how she Bauer. set it up do you know how she started tell me she re-recorded our voicemail message from hello you've reached the the bauer family to hello you've reached the bauer family and the Ann Bauer school of drama Play, Anne. So good. That's my mother.
And that's why, that's why she's a boss. And Bauer School of Drama. It was run from our living room. Uh, my entire time there, from the age of four to 18, I was in it. My brother and sister were chucked out eventually, or they left. Oh, right. Yeah. Not good enough. Was that also the only time your mum spent time with you? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That and a couple of very tense, very tense shopping trips we would go on. I did not, I was not an oh. easy teenager either. No, I, I can understand that. I I'm was, the same. I was not an easy teenager. I was a dream at school. I was so lovely to my friends. I was so lovely and at my friend's parents' house. Did the house. teachers love you? Yeah, for teachers, the most part. You're, you're a delight in the class. Yeah. Even though you're not doing very well, all your parents, your yeah. friends' parents go, oh, you're a dream yeah. child. Yeah. Well, a couple, a couple of my friends' parents thought it was too loud and annoying. No, that's fine. Which always bad happens. People. But um, I would come home and I'd be like, I'd take it all out. Oh. And what were the shopping the... trips with mum like? Oh, God. I was just, I was a big kid. I'm six foot one. I've got really large feet and they just mm. didn't do my sizes. And it was just, they were just tense. They were really tense. Like, so I also how do you deal with it? Because you don't want to tell a child when you're coming with that, they're coming at it with mm -hmm. their own, like their own body shaming, their mm -hmm. own body ideals. But they're trying to be kind. Mm -hmm. But really because of that, Almost the circumnavigation makes it worse. And that's the thing. My mom's super liberal. She she doesn't want like and but just uh, the the way that we would uh, like oh god I remember so clearly being in we'd have to like drive to a different town. I'm from Fleet, which is a small town in northeast Hampshire, but we'd go to Reading, which is like our biggest city close, right. and there'd be more shops there. But I came out of a change room. This was the first shop of the day. We just had to get like a top and jeans or something. And I was like, oh, this looks nice. This looks nice. And just really wanted it to be done with. And my mum was like, wait, no, that's a slimming mirror. That is, you do not look like that. And then I'm just like, okay, well, leave it, leave it, leave it. And she's like, no, we have to tell someone this is not appropriate. So oh. then she's gone and told someone. And I'm just like, like mummy, no, mummy, no, no, no. Oh. And she's like, this. She is not that thin. And I'm just there going, oh, I'm going to kill myself. I actually want to kill myself. <laughs> just, like, just sweat pouring down my back and just like, and then the whole day, like I wouldn't let go of it. She wouldn't let go of it. And we're just like, and we're both coming from the right place. Yeah, Like she's course. not being a bad person. No, no, just it, the wrong vocab. Yeah. And we would just be in the car together and just be shitty with each other, not on purpose. <sighs> yeah, it was a fucking nightmare. But I think because we did have such little time together and I really like, yeah, I was very much doing my own thing at school. Like, mm. I didn't even have her at parents' evenings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I super, like, just did it myself. Did your dad, was your dad also kind of as involved with you as a parent as your mum? Mm, my dad's really lovely. He's also, he is autistic as well. So, like, we're not, like, I really love my dad. I do. But we've not, like, he's never hugged me. Oh. Or anything, oh. <laughs> you know, like, and it was like, a, is it a handshake thing, a pat on the shoulder? Oh, and a good like work a dog, camp? like a dog, right? Like, and if I cry, he freak. Like, I'm not joking. In January this year, I was at his flat that he rents, and my brother was there as well, just coincidentally. And my brother was just like, we were just being like siblings with each other and like winding each other up about something. And then my brother was just like annoying me to the point where I was like, I'm going to cry. I can feel it. And then I went <gasps> to start crying. And we just heard my dad go, I'm going to my girlfriend's. I'm going to my girlfriend's. And I like, grabbed his bag. <laughs> this 73 year old he man. He has a go bag in case you show emotion. <laughs> a panic go bag for emotion. <laughs> And he was fucking gone. And we didn't see him for like 24 <laughs> hours. Just because I went. <gasps> he didn't even use the door. Just a dad shaped hole in the wall and a spinning yikes sign. And you have to understand, I literally five minutes before that, I'd been like, well, what are you doing today, dad? And he was like, just pouring about here. <laughs> he did not have a plan. He's so terrified. What would happen if you cried in front of him? I have. What does he do? Oh my God, freaks out, makes a weird joke about how I'm just like my mother. Like he does it, he honestly oh, can't oh, look me in the like eye. That. Like he, I, it, I'm like, it's like I'm a dog and he's like, there, 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 there. Um, oh, do you want, do you want, oh, I'll make, I'll make a tea, I'll make a tea. Once I was crying and he made a tea because he was like panicking because he knows it's something people do. And he made a peppermint tea and he was like, do you need milk? Do you take milk in your tea? And I was like, come on, Michael. We can't be at this level. Like we can't. One of my friends said. That's him doing his best. That's <laughs> milk and peppermint tea. I know. One of my friend's dads is a bit like that with emotion. And my friend was having a bit of a cry oh, God. in her bedroom. And he knocked on her door and went, is somebody blubbing in there? <laughs> blubbing? 
is somebody blubbing in there. How funny are dads when people cry? Oh my, the, the vocab we give men around how to deal with emotion is insane. But he can't be emotional for himself either. No. Like, I remember when my parents were getting divorced. They did it when I was adult, an adult, right? I was in right. my like late 20s, 28, something like that. 26, 27, 28. Um, and like my mum had told me, but she told me that like dad didn't want us to know yet, but she wanted us to know, right? So then Gold. eventually, it was like a month later and I was on the phone with her and I was like, can you just please tell him I know? Because this feels really like, it's, it's hurting my heart yeah. that he would be hurting. Yeah. Um, Because she was the one that called it. That like, and then no one's reached out. Oh my God. And then I was like, she was like, okay, fine. I'll tell him, I'll tell him. She told him. And then I rang him and I was like, oh, just to say like, I know. And I'm so sorry about you and mum. Like, I hope it's all okay. Like, can I do anything? And oh God, he just couldn't handle it. Like he clearly had been upset and all he could, he he genuinely believes the reason that she divorced him is because she went to book club and one of the women there taught her the phrase mansplaining and there was nothing he could do. And it's like, nothing do you, you not do. think it was like the 25 years of no eye contact or asking her how her day was? Like you don't want to like consider any of that. And it's like, no, this phrase mansplaining came yeah. in. If anything, he should explain to her why that why that had an issue and an effect on the marriage. Because he thought about just explaining to her why the term mansplaining is Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. That's nuts. Is your family is your family British? Mm-hmm. What's the what's the uh, part of it? The, Bauer isn't like, a British. Bauer name. is like German, but like from before my time. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, I yeah. was like coincidentally, I did live in Germany. And oh, I did where? like Berlin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I do speak German. And I know I look super German, but it was like. Do you speak German like fluently? Mm -hmm. oh, so I lived good. there. For how long? Three years. Three years. I also like languages. <laughs> I, also, I can't write no, in any language. I can I can't speak. Write you can put English. you in three weeks and you're in. I can just, I can talk. I can talk. It tells um, you that you, did, you started your comedy career in Germany. Yeah. Oh, my stand-up comedy career. Yeah. I mean, I went through a phase after school of like making sketches and putting them on YouTube, which I'm hoping have all been taken down there. Oh, really? With with a couple of mates from school who are now battle rappers. Shout out Marlo and Shuffle too. <laughs> we all go through phases. We go through phases. I just, I did, I'd never heard the term battle rappers before, and I know exactly what it is. It's really good. Isn't it's it? really it's good. It's fun. So you start up. What do you? What is the first gig? What's the first gig in Germany? Monday night mics at Kleinord. Oh yeah, in, uh, Neukölln, <laughs> and it is um, the well, it's changed now because the scene's a lot bigger. This is 2015, right? A lot smaller, a lot more chill, and um, seven minutes each. And I was one of those absolute fucks that everyone hates. Like I genuinely thought I was just funny, so I was no. like, I'll go on now, ref. I'm not joking. The arrogance, the fucking arrogance, and also like this is seven Germany is in 2015. You can smoke inside yeah. still, right? But we could, we would even smoke on stage. Yeah. Like, do you have any idea how hard it is to die and to take a drag of us? How long that takes? And I was yes. like, you know what's funny? I'll talk about my heartbreak because I'd had my heart broken before I moved to Germany, sure. right? And um, I played standard comedy photo. share believe out loud from my phone down the microphone to fill time. I'm not joking. It was mad. I would see this set now. It. I wish. I. W the thing is. I was so, so bad. And now the entire scene, which at that point was 25 people, has told me how fucking terrible I was. But they were so desperate for a woman. Because they only had four women on the scene at that point that I came back and they'd clearly all been like making fun of me. I came off and they went, best, best set ever. You're so funny. It was like loads of Americans. Um, you got to come back next week. You got to come back next week. And then like two months later, they were like, you were the worst thing we'd ever seen, but we oh. just needed you. <laughs> Which, thank God, they were so nice and so welcome. That is welcoming. true. That is like, they true. They could have been an asshole of a scene that were like, fuck yeah. off. But they were just so desperate for a new voice. And it was new. It was careful, new. Careful what you wish for. But I gigged there like the whole time for like mm. a year and a half. And then I still go back and do shows there. Amazing. I love it. How do your parents feel? Your parents feature in your stand-up. I've yeah, seen my it. Mom, my mum is the one that gets the hit. How does she feel about it? She's given me a carte blanche, in her words. Has she? Which is mad, isn't it? That so give your mad. kid a carte blanche that early on. But this is the thing. We have such a difficult relationship, but she's so like, do whatever you do you. She's like, I'm not going to censor your story. 
That's interesting. Isn't it amazing? Because I'm saying some stuff about mum in this that none of it is untrue and none of it is unflattering. But there's a joke in the show, which mm-hmm. is my mum was born to have gay kids. I'm gay. My brother's gay. <laughs> Medically speaking, her clitoris is a disco ball. <laughs> That's a right? Great joke. Thank you very much. Um, but like, I can't imagine in any other profession, okay. any other profession that a parent would be like, oh, my son's an accountant and part of his job is telling everyone at work that my clitoris is a disco ball for professional advancement. Oh, and, I go, and she's like, it's, it's a good joke. It's a good joke. I wrote um I wrote a joke the other last year and I had to, I sent it to mum to be like mum I'm really sorry this is the joke what do you think about it you send them written down I said I said I'm just getting clearance on this because this one I'm not sure of and it was I called my parents marriage Schrodinger's marriage because neither of them knew if they were alive or dead until they were out of it <laughs> which is fucking rough my mum would love that joke and my mum literally wrote back great joke works on all levels <laughs> use it. <laughs> See, we get the mums we need. Also, your mum started a drama school. I know. She understands what the artist goes through. She does. She also, like, is into the art. Does she have notes? So. Does she give you notes? That's a yes. She's only seen me, like, four times. Because I don't what? want. What? Only because I don't want her there. But you're so prolific. Has your dad seen your show? <clears throat> Once. Not a show. He came to me recording live at the Apollo. And he brought two sausage rolls in case he got hungry. I'm not joking. He also said no to coming the first three times I asked him because him and his then girlfriend had a holiday booked for Devon. But my mum came to Live at the Apollo. She's seen me do a, the second show at the Soho Theatre. Mm. The first show, I don't think I... I think... No, she never saw it. I sent her a voice recording before I did it in Edinburgh, though. Oh, wow. Because that I did talk about the Ambauer School of Drama. I think I just, like... Is it still running the Amber? No, now it's not. Clients. She phased that out. She phased that out. She was like, but I'm not going to deny a generation my expertise. So she just stopped taking on younger and younger <laughs> classes until they were aged out. I'm not going to deny a it generation. Was, you've got, it was a big thing in our town, the Ambauer School of Drama. Like it was to the point where I'm in Melbourne right now and an alumni came to the show who just, just happened to live here for a year. Incredible. Incredible work. And Bauer Power, baby. And Bauer Power. <laughs> um, but yeah, they don't, I don't know. I don't really want them there massively. But they watch things on TV. Yeah. And I think my mum, if I wanted her to come, she would be there. I just think it's a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Um, What's the relationship with them like now? Between the two of them. Mm. Fine. They, yeah. they talk all the time. I think I think like it's just the the need of having a sibling with special needs like parents do have to communicate differently, mm. you know. And also they're friendly, like nothing truly nasty happens, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you for coming up to come today. We've got a couple of last gauntlets hurdles in this steeplechase. Holy shit, here we go. It's called the pick and mix. Oh my god. It's where you get to dive a hand, a finger, a wrist, an extremity into a little jumble. Of memories oh and pick out two little memories to tantalize us, to tease us, to sum up your entire experience as a child. Pick and mix, pick and mix. It's, it's time for us to do pick, pick and mix. mix. Family hell holes, please. Your first pick is family hell holes. Family hell holes. Got any recollections of family vacations? Shoot. Um, we would go on the most epic family holidays, like huge family holidays. But my dad would, it wouldn't be organized with the children in mind. Does that make sense? Like we wouldn't go to theme parks or to the beach. Mm -hmm. It was very much what Michael thought would be interesting. And my mother was very keen on like art galleries and like, like liberal parents. Anytime in a holiday, someone says the words interesting. (laughs) I'm like, fuck off. This is abuse. Take me oh. to a water park, not an art gallery. We, I wish it was just art galleries. The art galleries was like one level of it. Well, my dad would just like race through and just sit and have a coffee at the end as quickly as he could by himself. We went to we went to death camps. What? I went to a prisoner of war camp, Shangi mm. Shangi 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 prison. You went to Shangi in prison. Singapore, a Japanese prisoner of war camp. And you've got to remember, I was going on family holidays during the noughties. so it wasn't like it was just <laughs> historical information written out in horrific pictures. This is when like the world was panicking that they weren't exciting enough for children to learn about history. So they went interactive, <laughs> interactive museums, which meant that like. My father would put me, my terrified little sister, and my mad brother in like a um, 
come into this room and learn what it was like to be a Japanese prisoner of war. <laughs> and it, not good. Not good. Turn the lights off us and start screaming at us. Like, it was insane. Trench experiences, yeah. blitz experiences. Like, here's a stress position. Oh, my like, God. Yeah, and then with my mother, who's so, like otherworldly as well being like oh Helen's having a panic attack at the trench experience that's because you were in the trenches in another life my love I can tell you that for nothing oh mummy which side I can't tell you like like really like just darkness and then I knew it was weird because I'd come back and then like that first day back everyone's like what did you do in your summer holidays and everyone was like Alicante Alicante Benidorm and like which is like southern Spain yeah. and then I'd have to be like Dachau <laughs> like it's so Oh god, it was it was fucking mad. It was so mad. That may be one of the wildest family hellhole stories we've had on this podcast. And that's every year. No, it's so unfair. It's so unfair. Don't go for it. Because I was allowed to do anything I wanted. Like I wasn't watched. I was like, I just literally like did my own thing, right? Yep. Like picked my own subjects at school, didn't matter if I did well or not. Like I had to pick like did whatever. And then for some reason. Even though I was such a nice girl, my mum was so sure that if I had a boy in my bedroom, I would get pregnant. Yeah, and I see it. It's but I, I genuinely like wasn't. I was like such a like. I turned sixteen. I was like, when you're sixteen, you lose your virginity. So I found a guy, and I was like, you're a virgin as well. We're gonna do this, and we're just gonna like figure it out together. And it was just for that one night, so I could lose my virginity and I could tick that box. Like I was like organized with it and yes once it's a very german way to lose your virginity oh it's so deutsch yeah so deutsch <laughs> Heute machen wir einfach. um and then but like i really wasn't but like i all my friends for some reason their parents were just super chill with it we were in a big group of friends that i'd been in since we were like four years old right you can say commune we were in a commune and it's like why can he not come into my room <laughs> What am I gonna do? And it made me feel like I don't know. It was like there was like one rule put on me, and I fucking hated it so much. I hated it so much because oh. it made me like feel like I do everything. You trust mm. me to cook in the evenings by myself, like take myself to school. What it does is it reframes all of that. Is oh, it's not that you believe in me; it's mm -hmm. that you're neglecting me because you put this one rule on mm. me, which means and this you is don't the trust one me. That I care about. Yeah. Because I wish you put other rules in. Mm. Like, looking back, I'm like, I wish that there'd been, like, other things put in place. <laughs> and I'm like, and this is the one. This is, and I, I genuinely think it's because Chris was once caught in my underwear outside my house. But he was <laughs> gay. We, my mum told me he was gay. Because I was in love with him in year eight. And she had to tell me. She was like, he's not going to go out with you. I know you've asked him, like, he's four times He's in your now, underwear. But he is gay, Helen. But that was one you wanted to lose your virginity to? No, no, I picked a different one. By that okay. point, I knew. he. Chris hadn't come out to me. I don't think he knew, but my mum was like, you've got to stop this pining over this boy. You don't have a connection because you both know the lyrics to Shakira. <laughs> he knows the lyrics to Shakira for a very different reason. <laughs> but I was so in love with him. Yeah, I was so in love. That's amazing. We had the, I, the same thing happen to me in no. high school. That the girl who I was like, I was best friends with, but wasn't out with, but was also kind of like still a little bit in love with. Yeah. Her name was Bronwyn. Oh, Bronwyn. And she was talking to her grandmother. Bronwyn. And Bron and her grandmother were talking. Bron told me this later. It's like, um, oh, yes. Well, I, I, she was telling me, oh, telling my nan, oh, this boy, I think he likes me. He hangs around me, blah, 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 blah. He's like this and he does this. And her grand just went, ah, oh, he's a faggot, dear. <laughs> <laughs> just from a description. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I had bleached blonde hair, tweezed eyebrows, and a tongue piercing at like And did Bronwyn 17. have any idea? Well, after that point, she yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would, yeah. My mum had to tell me about six times, though. I was like, no, you don't understand. We've got a connection. <laughs> he went to prom with me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, As protection. To. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the protection. You're like your bodyguard. Here comes Big Helen with a big broad back. <laughs> Chris just holding on behind me. I'll take me. a bullet for you, Cam. <laughs> No, you're the bodyguard. It's a lovely retelling of the Whitney Houston movie and you're Kevin Costner. But then it's like, if we know he's gay, why can't he be in my room? Right. Like, like Chris in. <laughs> What's he going to do? Sing me a lovely song? And and you bottled it. Mm. Hey, we have one last thing. Okay. One last it. little task for you. I and mean, this is called Shall I Be Mother? Shall I Be Mother? This is where you... <laughs> You look into my eyes and imagine I am Michael or Anne 
or an odd non-binary Frankenstein of the two. Non-binary Frankenstein of the two, please. Correct choice. And you speak from your heart, looking into my eyes, what would you say to them now? This is really tricky because, you know, I was making fun of my dad earlier for not being able to be like emotional, vulnerable. I actually also have that, it turns out. Um, I want to say I'm sorry for being a shit in my teenage years, but I'm not, but I'm also working through stuff in therapy still, so I don't actually know what to say to you right now, <laughs> non-binary. <laughs> mix of the two thing <laughs> so i don't can i come back on this podcast in ideally a year but let's be honest probably four years because i will take breaks due to financial situations <laughs> from therapy and then we'll sort it out then and hopefully they haven't popped it by then but if they had then i'll do the classic thing of instead of being annoyed at them i'll mourn the fact i never made the effort at the time <laughs> Thank you for having me. I've had a lovely time. Can I go for a cigarette now? That was a lot. That was a lot. It was brilliant, though. I just did a small fart. Did you? Yes. Oh, panic. Just a lot of panic. Hey, Helen and Bauer, where can our listeners find more of you? Just online, I think. Just Your listeners are everywhere, huh? Mm -hmm. So like, just go on my Instagram. That's the one I use. It's Helen ba Bauer, spelled the German way, B-A-U-E-R. And um, just follow me there, and I'll put everything I do will be on there. Fantastic. Thank you. Pleasure. And as usual, you can find me, Ruben K, right behind you. Made you look. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Daddy, Helen Bauer. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs>